always felt that the children thought they came from a peculiar, that we came from a peculiar place called Holocaust and didn't have a life before then. But we did, we had a very rich life. Uh, I don't mean rich in money, but the Jewish life in Poland was very rich. There was support and um, organizations and uh, um, halutzim and whatever. Uh, but everyone was involved in one way or another. And it was a very warm family life. And I had a pretty charmed life. And then, when I turned three, it all finished. I'm Jewish, and I grew up in a world where I don't recall not knowing about the Holocaust. There was always something present. At the age of 16, I had the opportunity to go to Poland and Israel on March of the Living, but I felt I wasn't ready. Now, at the age of 25, I realized I needed to go. finish up your water. Just when you do uh, put down your water bottles, don't put them on the shelves over here because they're going to roll around and fall on your head. My father was my very best friend. I have a picture of my father in Mexico City in 1926. He traveled all over. So they it's unbelievable that this. But we go out. You know how it is. Why was it so important for us to start a cemetery of all places? Yes. A lot of places we're going to see the, the names, they don't have graves. Exactly. Because here I can actually go and show you names of people and tell you what they did and what they said and what they wrote and what they left behind. And that's a bit different from the other places that we're going to go to. So we're going to start right now with a great celebration of life. And I know it's funny, a great celebration of life right here. We're gonna, we're gonna meet the Jews of Warsaw from before World War II, and we're gonna try and learn as much as we can uh, about their lives. <laughs> First day, March of the Living. First hour. First hour, how are you feeling? Good. 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 So, started, you know, meeting everybody, being here. How does it feel being in this cemetery where our people lay to rest? It's a celebration of life and the history of the, the Jews of Poland, Jews of Warsaw. I mean, they, they lived pretty, pretty well. Um, it's nice right now because everyone walking now, you can see how quiet you can hear the birds. Yeah. I mean, it's Still a beautiful lives. cemetery. By, by, the, by the signs of the tombstones, you know, the, the artistry that went into them. It's, um, I, would, I feel good that they, they lived a, a happy and full life. You know, there's, there's artists and actresses, business people. When they saw 1030 Auschwitz, they looked at each other and they said, what's Auschwitz? That means that as late as the summer of 1944, after close to a million, actually less than a million, but uh, about half or 600,000 uh, uh, Jews were killed already in Auschwitz-Birkenau, the people in Lodz Ghetto had never heard of Auschwitz. They didn't know what Auschwitz was. When you think about it, these people had no clue. And that's something to think about next time that we ask ourselves, 
Why didn't they rebel? Why didn't they uprise? Why didn't they do something? They just simply had absolutely no clue what was going to happen. But as you can see, this is Tante Lena. This is the one who went to Paris, who was a, a student at the University of Berlin. This is the one that became um, a pharmacist, but left for uh, Palestine. This one is Buenos Aires, and this one remained. She remained as a... And this is the one that got the fate of... of uh, Imagine every single person that you know in your life, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your neighbors, every single person that you know in your life, dead, killed in one day. On August 26, 1941, there was no more community of Ticochin, a community which lasted for hundreds of years, gone just like that, wiped off the face of the earth. That is the story of these pits, and that is a story of 1.5 million Jews who found their deaths where the killing squads used to go from one town to the other and simply shoot entire communities into pits like this. It's not a personal issue, this is a human issue. These were people. And whether they were related to you or not, they were human beings and they were people with hopes and dreams and uh, families just like every one of us. And so to be here in a place like this uh, and to remember people, even if you didn't know their names and you didn't have a relation to them, you're still doing them a, a great honor by coming here and remembering them. Soon there won't be any Holocaust survivors left to tell our children what really was. And if they don't know, this is very bad because it wasn't just a tragedy in the lives of Jews. This was a tragedy in the whole of mankind. The world needs to know what atrocities were done in order to prevent them happening again. The world needs to understand. And that's why it's important for youngsters to go so they can carry that knowledge. Maybe, maybe if I would have pulled him, maybe he would have been saved. I don't know. I had, I had to justify that how come I didn't hug him and say goodbye. But it was done so fast. You see, it wasn't even done like calm and stand. It was right away, right away. You didn't have a chance to go anywhere. You were just pushed apart and that was it. was sent uh, to Treblinka and his younger brother right before they were sent off uh, was shot in front of him and um, so his whole family died in Treblinka and um, my Zeta passed away in February and uh, he was one of my best friends but I never got to, I never expressed that to him, but I hope, you know, he knows, and I hope he knows that I'm standing here, where, where he was tortured and his humanity was taken. 
this whole family was killed. I feel a great immense of confusion because I can't understand for the life of me how someone can not see another human being in another person. I don't understand how people looked into the faces of those women and children and men, those innocent people, and couldn't see a reflection of their own humanity. I didn't understand until I came here. Brother and sister both came, told me about it, you read about it, you watch the movies, you read the books. Until you come and see that this is a real place, you can't comprehend what happened here. And you just can't. You have to see it for yourself. You have to see that it's real. We were ripped from the arms of our parents and thrown into the fire. We were nothing more than children. We had dreams and we had no hope. We were taken away in the dead of night like cattle in cars, no air to breathe, smothering, crying, starving, dying. This atrocity to mankind cannot happen again. Remember us, for we were the children whose dreams and lives were stolen away. I always knew about Treblinka, but I didn't understand. They estimate around 900,000 men, women, and children were murdered in Treblinka. There was no selection process. It was a factory of death. They don't know how many survived, but it's as little as 40. It's a number so small, it defies belief. And when I was there, I didn't understand. Could have accomplished so much but were cut down before they had time to mature they were such lovely decent people leading ordinary lives looking forward to their future to love and friendship it is a terrible terrible feeling if destiny would have made life different and we would have born over here what's the difference between them and us if we were born a couple of generations earlier we, this is us we, we could have been these people We didn't just study World War II and what happened to six million Jewish lives. We stood in a cattle car that Jews stood in when they were going to the concentration camps. We walked through the steps of the con concentration camps, the exact path that Jews who were going to the gas chambers through the selection process did. And to me, that gave us an emotional connection to the history that we were studying and to have the courage and the sensitivity to take us through those steps will resonate with me for the rest of my life. I'm in awe of her, as I am of Fagi and other survivors that I've met, that they could go through so much and do more than just survive, that you could hold on to your kindness and your gentleness, that you could come and be teachers and mothers and grandmothers and raise families with those values in mind. I, I think that this is the true miracle and the strength behind survivors like you, Faggy, and, and my grandmother. So, thank you. If I would have faith in my heart, I would have never had a wonderful marriage, and I wouldn't have had a family, and I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved. Because when you have hatred in your heart, there's no room for love. As much as Fagi has suffered, she still smiles and she still laughs. And to, to prove to us that, that um, love is more powerful than hate, I, I, I think that's what I'm, that's the lesson that we've learned. 
And the main reason why I came was, was right here, was Fagi. Fagi and, and all the Holocaust survivors that we still have. Because that there will be a time, and it's probably starting already, where there will be plenty of people and plenty of nations who will say that the Holocaust didn't exist. And it's my duty, as it is all of yours, to come and hear it from her firsthand. To say that you were there with her, and to advocate, and to talk about the experiences that she had to everybody else. And God bless Fagi and all the survivors that we have, but um, we all know the reality of 20, 25 years. I'm not going anywhere yet. I know that. God <laughs> <laughs> bless you for long life. Okay. But nobody knows. That's the reality. That's the reality. feel numb and then these waves of shock and sadness and I feel proud to be able to march for my family that have perished in the Holocaust, you know, the six million plus all the other million. So I just feel honored to be here and to be able to march for everyone that can't. I started bawling and I don't know what I was feeling. I was feeling a mixture of happiness to see that they were there. But very, very deep sadness as well. And a Holocaust survivor who I didn't know, her name was Adele, um, came up to me and she she grabbed me and she wiped away my tears and she she shook me and she said to me, and she gave me a, a hug, which I will never forget, and she said to me, we are here. And that is something I will, will remain in my mind for the rest of my life. We need to do this march to show that we are here. I think it's to respect those that couldn't be walking today because of what happened here. It's about making sure that it never happens again by remembering. thousands of participants in the March of the Living from Israel and from around the world. Today we have an obligation not merely to remember the past, we have an obligation to learn from the past. Most importantly, we need to apply those lessons to the present. Seventy years ago the Jewish people could not defend themselves. Today the situation is different. In order to secure our people's future, we have been reborn in the land of our forefathers. We built in Israel a new beginning of freedom and a new beginning of hope. Am Yisrael Chai, Netzach Yisrael, Lo Yishetim. Shenitcholala alam Yisrael bazman ha'achron. Ba hukru'u latabach milyonim yehudim be'aropa. Hukicha mikadash ba'alil et achreach בפתרון בעיית העם היהודי מחוסר המולדת והעצמאות על ידי חידוש המדינה היהודית בארץ ישראל. understand the necessity of it, the importance of its existence, the reason why we can't live without it. When I come to Israel, I feel like a weight is lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I'm coming home. I've always felt at home here, but I really truly feel that uh, coming here after the march 
it is like that weight being lifted off, that I know that never again will we be in a position where we aren't able to defend ourselves, where we aren't able to reach out to somebody and have them come to our rescue. I think we really, we have to be very, very grateful for the fact that we're staying now in the, in the Israeli sun, although it's the same exact sun that was beating on our heads in Auschwitz as well. But we still have to be very grateful that we're standing right here in this place. And I'd like to remind you that uh, Dolik, one of the underground fighters in the in the Krakow ghetto, he's saying that there's somewhere on the other side of the Mediterranean, there's a group, there's a community of Jewish people who are going to live on and are going to remember us. So let's really be thankful and let's say Shekhanah together. <laughs> I think that understanding how amazing it is that we have a Jewish state that will fight to protect Jewish people, whether they're Orthodox or conservative, whether they're religious or secular or Ashkenazi or Sephardic, uh, you understand that, that you as a Jewish person are, are part of a history and a culture which, which, which is rich and special and community oriented. And, and, as, as, you, and as, you, as you come to Israel at the end, you understand how, how special it is to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Yom Hazikaron is the one day that I don't feel connected to this place. Here I am, this person who feels very much a part of part of life here, part of a part of this culture and a part of this community. And yet, on this one day, it calls to the forefront exactly what those differences are. When I was going to university to study, my contemporaries were going into the army. They were putting their bodies on the line and their lives on the line so that this place can exist. I'm a big sister. I'm sure some of you are siblings as well, but um, he called his sister from the front lines and he didn't get through to her. He only got his message machine and he just left this message that was something along the lines of, hey, it's me, Michael. Things are a bit crazy here and I don't know what's gonna happen, but I just wanted to call and say, I love you. And that, that for me is a big sister. It, I mean, it, as a sibling, it, it, it makes it real for me. Usually I come here and it's like so much shame I, I have. This one day, and we all spoke about how at home we feel here and how connected we feel here in this place. And I do, 100% I do, except for this one 24 hour period. Because I come here and how am I supposed to relate to this? How, how, how on earth can I put myself and say that I'm a, I connect and I support Israel. While I was going to school, Shai was learning how to how to hold a gun and how to fight. I mean, I could have uh, gone up at age 18 and come here. I didn't, um, and uh, you know, most of us didn't. Uh, don't, and we should be very, very thankful, very grateful. and to take all of this in and to start to ask yourself, 
what does this mean to you and what is it going to mean to you going forward? We only have, unfortunately, less than two days together. Uh, and uh, as this experience comes to a close, it's really important to take a few minutes to think about what these past few days have meant and what they will mean. Experiencing the camps, experiencing Poland, experiencing life, Jewish life in Europe prior to World War II, I learned a lot and uh, how much culture was lost in Europe. I'm proud of my history, I'm proud of my heritage, I'm proud of the text that we've been studying together for 3,000 years, uh, together and going over and over and over again, and we are all a part of that. Um, and I know that this generation is kind of detached from that for whatever reason, but you are part of such a long chain of, of Jewish history and you have so much to be proud of. It is amazing. I love each and every one of you and, and I, don't, I don't get emotional. I don't cry. Um, I'm happy and I love to show affection, but I don't, I don't cry in front of people. And so to be able to feel comfortable uh, not only sharing their stories, but not having to hold back in in any emotion, uh, really uh, left me speechless, really touched my heart. I come on this journey you know, as a one, a filmmaker, and two, a participant, and a real, I, 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 I'm gonna struggle to come back to Australia and t tell everyone what I experienced. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna struggle to because this is literally the most incredible thing I've done in my entire life. So, you know, to be here with the most amazing people and you, know, you guys letting me film you guys at your most vulnerable and happy moments, I feel very lucky. So thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Today is May the 5th. Today was my father's birthday and he's the one who was killed in Dachau in 19 January 1945. And I looked up in the sky and I said, and I copied with Barbara Streisand from the movie Papa. Papi, can you hear me? I'm still standing here.